Whatever you're doing in life, you are governed by natural laws. Now, a natural law is a law that is irrefutable. Nobody would ever dream of arguing, for instance, with the law of gravity. It's a natural law, what is known as a law of nature. And there are also laws of human nature. And one of those states that there are two kinds of people in the world. There are the special people and there are the ordinary people. And there will always be more ordinary people than special people. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Because you see, the special people are going to need a lot of ordinary people. They're going to need ordinary people to wash their cars, wait on their tables, build their houses, design their houses, fix their teeth, look after their health, mind their money. And these ordinary people may resent this. They may resent the fact that they're spending a lot of their time servicing the lifestyles of the special people. The difference is that the special people have taken a decision to control their lives. And the ordinary people are content to allow others to determine their destiny. And this is not natural for human beings. The caveman did not sit in his cave and feel hungry and say, oh gosh, I'm hungry. The caveman picked up his spear and went out and did something about it. So how is it that society today is so weighted in favor of the ordinary people? Now, I can tell you the answer is to be found in any school in the middle of the summer term. If you go in there, you'll find in the school hall, they're teaching the 15-year-olds to write out CVs. They're showing them how to behave in interviews. And they are telling them that the best thing they can possibly do is find somebody to give them a job. Nowhere in the course of this are they teaching them what a job actually means. This is what a job means. With a job, it's the boss who decides whether you can have the job in the first place. The boss who decides how much you're going to get paid, when you can go on holiday. And if the boss doesn't run a profitable company, then with the best will in the world, he can't keep you in a job. Now with a business, it's different. With a business, you invest in yourself. That is to say, you pay out money up front because you believe in yourself. And then you decide how much work to do. And if you want to earn more, you just do more work or you learn better skills. And you will always get paid exactly what you're worth. Now that may be more or less than you thought, but it is what you're worth. You'll never get paid what you're worth in a job. Because if the boss paid you what you were worth, then he wouldn't be able to make any profit out of you, would he? Now, the ordinary people who have these jobs might possibly resent this. But for one thing, they've got something noble, something virtuous, something that the special people can never have. It's called a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not interested in a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. I want sensational pay for part-time work. <laughs> so why on earth have we ended up in this situation with so many people taking the wrong choice? I'll tell you. History. Because, you see, if you know enough history, you can explain anything. So here is a potted history of employment law through the ages. It begins in the days of ancient Rome. Days of ancient Rome, you had the citizen of Rome and you had the slave. And the slave did all the work and then the citizen of Rome would pay the slave in food. Just enough food to ensure that the slave was able to get up the next day and do it all again. And of course, the slave had no choice. Employment, ancient Rome. But civilization moved on and things got better. And then in the Middle Ages, England was at the cutting edge of employment law with the system of the Lord of the Manor and the serf. And the way that worked was that the Lord of the Manor owned the land and he allowed the serf to work upon a strip of that land and the serf was allowed to keep the produce he grew there and feed it to his family. 
And he did have a choice. On one day of his life, the serf had a choice. It would be either the day his father died or the day he came of age, whichever was sooner. And on that day, he could choose either to take his chances as a free man in the world or he could choose to be bound to the land as a serf for the rest of his life. And if he chose the land, but tired of working on it and sought to leave it and run away, then men-at-arms would be sent to hunt him down and bring him back with an iron collar around his neck. And according to the whim of his lord, he may be required to wear that collar for the rest of his life. And around it would be stamped the words, this man is the property of and the name of the Lord. That was employment law, medieval style. But civilization moved on. And then we came to the 19th century and the Victorians. Now the thing about the Victorians was that they were great philanthropists. They understood that every man was created equal in the eyes of God. And therefore, it was the right of every man to determine his own destiny. And if he sought to better himself, he must be allowed to do that. Which meant they had to institute the concept of a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. That's where it came from. That was the Victorians. Every man had the right to a fair day's work for his labor. Every man, that is, not every woman. Women didn't get equal pay until the 1960s. But now where are we? We're now in the 21st century and civilization is ready to move on again. And you know what's driving it? Celebrity magazines. I bet you didn't know celebrity magazines were the driving force behind the progress of civilization. But they are. Because you see, with celebrity magazines, the ordinary people can open the pages and share in the joy of the special people and their abundant lifestyles with their fast cars and their fabulous clothes traveling the world at will. And suddenly, the idea of a fair day's work for a fair day's pay just isn't enough. So they need a new mantra. And they've got one. They've got, well, that person was born with a silver spoon in their mouth. This person was in the right place at the right time, knew the right people. And how about this one? Some people have all the luck. But it can't be just luck, can it? Because luck, or to give it its proper name, opportunity, is presented not just to the few, but to all. What makes the difference is how a person reacts when presented with their opportunity. Now, the ordinary person presented with their opportunity will immediately say, well, these things never work. Anyway, I couldn't do it, not in the place where I live, not with the people I know. And here's a good one. If something looks too good to be true, it usually is. You ever heard that? Hmm. Do you think Richard Branson ever said that? If so Richard Branson sees something that looks too good to be true, he's going to say, I'm going to grab that before somebody else does. But you see, Richard Branson is a special person, and a special person will look at an opportunity and say, this is just what I've been waiting for. I can do this or I can learn to do this. I know the right people or I can find the right people. And they will pick it up and they will run with it. And because they are thinking only of success, guess what they will find? Success. I mean, they might make mistakes. Did Richard Branson ever make a mistake? Of course he did. But does anybody remember his mistakes? No. Because the special person when they make a mistake, will just pick themselves up and run on. But an ordinary person, when they stumble, ah, oh, they will fall on the ground and they will say, well, at least I gave it a try. Because what they've just done is proved what they knew all along, that these things never work. And anyway, what was it that Yoda said about trying? He says, there is do and there is not do. There is no try. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who in the room today are the special people. Nobody does. And we won't find out until the end, by which I mean the end of life. But, 
If you, what you've heard here today has quickened your pulse, if you feel just an inch taller than you were when you came into the room, if you're breathing a little faster, then that's a sign. That's a sign that there's something inside you that sets you apart. Because you see, it's not what people said to you over the years. It's not where history has brought you to this place in the world today that matters. It's what you do from now on. And if you can seize your opportunity and run with it, and focus on your goals and pursue with vigor until you reach your goal. If you can go out and get 10,000 no's, then you are special and you will hold in your hand the golden prize and everything your heart desires will be yours. <laughs>